Hello there everyone, it's Catherine. Welcome back to my channel. Another week, another video for you. I hope you're enjoying your June and that it's going very nicely for you. Right, let's get down to business. The video. Today I've got 10 interesting facts about Britain. Some of them are hilariously funny and weird and great. Some of them are just facts that are very historical and serious. <laughs> I love watching these kind of videos about other countries. I love learning about different culture. And so I really enjoyed making this one. So let's get started. Number one, toad in the hole. You might be thinking this is related to an animal somewhere in the ground, but no, it's actually a dish, a traditional English dish. So the name is toad in the hole, which I just think is hilarious. A toad is like a big frog. I'm sure you know what these are. They are disgusting, I hate them. When I first moved into my flat in Brighton a few years back, on my first day there was a toad on the doorstep greeting me and I called it my welcome toad and he had a name which was Ben, I have no idea why. But he was gross, I'll be honest, he was revolting, so not a fan. Back to toad in the hole. Right, so this is a batter with sausages inside it traditionally served with onion gravy and vegetables. So this dish derives from Yorkshire. So the origin of the name is unclear. It could be related to the way that toads wait for their prey to come along and the way the sausages are in the batter, they're waiting. No one really knows. God, I hate toads. Ugh. But like with other things in Britain, it's quite eccentric and lovable and endearing. And there's also another dish which is called egg in a basket which is just equally hilarious. <laughs> just to let you know though, it is really delicious and considered comfort food when the weather gets really cold and you just want something really filling and wholesome. Have some toad in the hole, it's very tasty. <laughs> Number two, a happy birthday wish from royalty. Yes, you may have heard, when you turn 100, you get a letter or a telegram from the queen or now the king. And this has just been happening for years. It's really nice tradition. Actually, in the modern day, it's a personalized card that you receive and it's no longer limited to just your 100th birthday. In fact, in the UK, you can apply for a letter to be sent to you for your 105th birthday and then every birthday after that. I just think that's so lovely. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Number three, chicken tikka masala is our national dish. Now, you might equate British food to fish and chips, Sunday roast, a cream tea, but actually our nation had a vote and we all voted for chicken tikka masala as our favorite dish. And I have to say, it is delicious. You cannot beat a chicken tikka masala from time to time. You know, you just sometimes just get this craving for a curry. I love the Cockney rhyming slang for curry. They say Ruby Murray. Let's have a Ruby Murray. I love it. Now, it's not certain who was first to come up with the chicken tikka masala recipe, but it was popularized by British Asian cooks in the 1960s. I just love the link we have to India, so UK and India. We're, we're so linked on many, many things. And another example is cricket. Um, India loves cricket, and so do we. We have a, a very big history of cricket playing in the UK. So it's just lovely when countries come together like that. Number four, we really love tea. Now, sometimes you can write a few stereotypes off in, in life, but this one is pretty accurate. When you think of British people drinking a lot of tea, it's true. It's, it's absolutely true, what can I say? I think, I think my granny gets through about maybe 100 cups a week. I mean, it's, it's literally on the hour every hour. So the British consume around 100 million cups of tea every day. And just in case you wanted to know this, that's 36 billion cups a year. Unlike most other countries though, correct me if I'm wrong, 98% of us do add milk to the brew, including me. It's lovely. If you haven't tried it, try it. But I have to say I'm more of a coffee person. I don't really drink tea that often actually. I like it when it's made in a teapot. So when my granny makes a proper tea, it's lovely. But yeah, she uses tea leaves, which is the old fashioned way of making tea. Number five, cheese rolling is a sport. Yes, you heard right. 
cheese rolling. What could that possibly mean? Maybe you're thinking it's something to do with a cooking competition. No, it's not. I wish it was. It's a competition that happens annually. A group of people stand at the top of a very, very steep hill in Gloucestershire and they chase a 3.2 kilogram wheel of cheese down the hill. As you can imagine, this is pretty dangerous. And the most recent one happened last week and people broke legs, people had seizures. I mean, this is not for the faint hearted. I have to say though, the cheese in that area is absolutely delicious. They have so many varieties of hard cheese. And so I can quite understand why they're chasing a piece of cheese down the hill and not something completely different. But yeah, it was too, it was too funny not to share with you that. And um, I know that in Spain they have this giant tomato throwing uh, fight. Correct me if I'm wrong if it's not in Spain. It sounds hilarious and amazing. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you have anything similar to this happening in your country. Number six, Scotland has a famous monster. Now you've probably heard about the Loch Ness Monster. It's a very big tourist attraction in Scotland. Affectionately named Nessie, it is a monster with two humps in its back. And this myth, or maybe it's not a myth, has been around for years. And although it's make-believe and not true, many people have said that they have seen this monster in recent decades, so there's no smoke without fire. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. Personally though, I can quite understand how this myth began. I went on a trip around Scotland in a camper van and we slept next to locks and woke up in the morning and the mist was just hanging over the lock. And I have to say, it is one of the most magical, eerie, mystical places I've ever been. Who knows what's down there lurking in the depths of the Loch Ness? <laughs> Number seven, stamps originated in the UK. Did you know that? I didn't. I found this out quite recently. So the UK was the first country to use postage stamps. First ever stamp was known as the Penny Black and it was issued in 1840. These days, it's not as cheap to send a letter as it once was, but I still think it's a lovely, lovely thing. And I very often write letters to my granny, updating her on what I've been up to. And also stamp collecting is a very popular hobby, um, more with the older generations, I would say, but, and my grandpa has books and books and books of stamps. And it's really, really relaxing to just sort of flip through them and um, see how the stamps have changed over the years. Number eight, Stonehenge is older than the pyramids. So we often think of the pyramids as being the oldest monuments in the world, but there are some constructions in the UK that are even older. Stonehenge is located in the southwest of England and it's one of the UK's most famous tourist attractions. Stonehenge was believed to have been created in 3000 BC meaning that it's older than Egyptian pyramids. If you come to the UK, try to visit Stonehenge. There's just something really eerie about standing amongst the rocks, which are enormous, by the way, and no one really knows how the rocks got there. There's no real explanation for how they got there. It's, it's incredible. Number nine, a Welsh town has the longest name in Europe. In fact, one of the longest names in the world. Now, road signs in Wales tend to be written in Welsh and English. It is the most beautiful language. When you hear it, it's like music. It's got all these interesting Gaelic sounds to it. And I'm not going to lie, I cannot attempt to say this. I have tried a couple of times, but I'm going to leave a link in the description box where you can go and watch it being said and listen to it because the guy that does it is, is giving the weather forecast and he absolutely nails it in a way that I could never. <laughs> so my sister went to university in Cardiff, which is in Wales, and it's just such a lovely place to visit. Really friendly people and just beautiful countryside. So if you're ever in the UK and you have some extra time, try to go and visit Wales. Number 10. The UK has one of the largest libraries in the world. So I love this library. The closest station to it is King's Cross St Pancras in London. 
and it's pretty easy to find once you get to that station. And I used to teach English in the city, in London, and I would have gaps between my classes. During the gaps between these classes, I just went to the British Library because it's an amazing place to go. There's a cafe and you can just get a book and sit there and just be surrounded by these cabinets. Some of them are glass cabinets full of books that are not allowed to be touched because they're so old but there's just something really atmospheric about being surrounded by old things and age. It has over 170 million items and if you laid out all of the different items it would stretch all the way to Aberdeen. That's crazy! Also this number is growing every year, so the library is getting bigger and bigger. It's kind of magic how they fit all of that stuff into one building. It's just kind of like Mary Poppins, you know, when she had that bag and she'd pull out these huge <laughs> lampshades and stuff. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I absolutely love libraries and a really, really big one is just even better. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a bit different to normal, more about your listening and learning about the culture than actually learning English. But as I said before, this is a great way to learn English, to combine the culture and the language together in one package. Let me know in the comments which fact you liked the best and follow me on Instagram if you'd like to see what I get up to in my everyday life. All the information is in the description box. Hit subscribe if you'd be so kind and I'll see you next week for another video. Have a lovely weekend. Bye.